Hello. Do you want to avoid heart failure, depression, and even some forms of cancer? Do you want to stay young and look young? Or do you want to optimize your brain and your mood? If so, you need MVPA. It's the newest therapy on the block, and it's cheap and easily accessible. Everyone should be taking it, right? Except this isn't a miracle drug. It's this. Moderate, vigorous, physical activity. That's right. Fancy speak for good old heart pumping exercise. Wait, don't switch away just yet. I know exactly how you feel. One in three struggle to make it to their gym every morning. Yes, I made that up. But it's really plausible, isn't it? So this episode is going to tell you the subtle ways you can nudge yourself to get moving. And as with all nudges, it's going to be simple and easy. Some days after work, I make time for this. In order to live a long, healthy life, experts have settled on 150 minutes of MVPA in a week as the minimum recommended target. That's moderate to vigorous physical activity that will get your heart pumping. So for me, that's cycling like this three times a week. Wow, I love that pump of the heart and the sweat that exercise gives me. I don't think I do it enough. I can go for weeks just without exercising, sitting down in front of the computer on the sofa. If Singapore can succeed in getting the entire country to commit to 150 minutes of MVPA every week, that's going to mean a lot of savings in healthcare costs. So of course, Singapore has plans to do just that. Hello, Jason, for this episode, the team would like to challenge you to take part in the National Steps Challenge. It's said to be the world's first population level fitness tracker based physical activity. The National Steps Challenge is a campaign that nudges Singaporeans to get active. Download an app. Use a tracker to count steps and track minutes spent exercising. Earn points, which you can then redeem for supermarket vouchers. Download Healthy365 now. This campaign has run for seven years straight and has gotten hundreds and thousands of Singaporeans up and moving. But this year, there is a huge change. Before, you could do 10,000 steps at any pace. You could be relaxed, you could be fast, and you got 40 points. Now, for 5,000 steps, you only get 10 points. And if you want any more, your heart rate has to go up. By how much? That depends on your age. The website does have a nifty calculator for you. OK, I've got to input my age. I'm nearly 50, so I would need to hit 110 and above to qualify for MVPA. I think I can do this. But for most younger folks, the magic number is 120. You get 10 points if you maintain 10 minutes of MVPA, another 5 points if you reach 20 minutes, and the final 5 points if you get to 30 minutes. Why this change? In the latest National Population Health Survey, released at the end of 2022, the number of Singapore residents who clocked at least 150 minutes of MVPA was 71%, a significant drop from 80% in 2019. And that prompted the Health Promotion Board to change its reward system. It's been six months since the change. So I'm seeking out the woman who's been spearheading the National Steps Challenge to see if the tweak in the point system made a difference. When we revise the National Steps Challenge mechanics, it's really with the intention of moving the participants to be able to do more moderate to vigorous intensity physical activity, which is MVPA. So how's that been going? So six months after we have introduced the change, we have some, seen some very encouraging results. 
Specifically, 41% of our participants have increased their MBPA duration and the increase was a median weekly MBPA minutes of 58 minutes. How well has nudging prompted people to do more physical exercise in Singapore? What counts as nudges on the app? One of the nudging components we have, and it's a very important one, um, is really about providing the fitness uh, trackers to our participants, making more commercial trackers compatible with the Healthy365 app. And the objective is really to increase the ease in which people could then take part in the program, uh, could uh, collect their rewards, as well as be able to track their physical activity. I think people have this need to feel um, that they are competent in achieving a goal. We do this by breaking down good health as a goal, which could be very long-term in nature, into simpler actions that a person could then perceive as bite-sized and more realistic and achievable for them. We also provide timely feedback to our participants. So today, when a participant launched the Healthy365 app, this will be the first thing they see. A dashboard that is using the graphics of an accelerator. Why specifically an accelerator? I think uh, we all like to see that we are all making progress um, in whatever we do. When we show it in the form of an accelerator, the participants can see themselves closing the ring. Health Promotion Board have applied nudging on a population level. But studies have shown that nudges can be even more effective when tailored to an individual's lifestyle and environment. That's why I've invited an expert in nudging to my home today. Why don't you tell me about your day and where exercise fits in with your daily schedule? Well, it doesn't fit into my day. <laughs> That's the problem. So when you come home, what is the routine that you undertake? OK, so I'll walk through that door usually take my shoes off and then most likely go for a shower because I feel a bit sweaty and sticky because it's Singapore, right? Then usually it's about comfort, so I just sit there mm -hmm. on the sofa and I'm kind of watching TV. So would you say that by the time you're in this space, um, you're pretty much in your comfort yes. zone. You're not in a mindset anymore to then exert yourself. Maybe you could tell me about the various opportunities that you have for exercise. I've got weights in the back room. I have a nice pool in this condo and, and a gym. And I also have a gym membership. And I have my pride and joy, which is a bike. Ah. But it's kind of in the kitchen. So my bike's just here. Uh, against the wall. Oh, wow. Okay. Hanging there. So you really can't see it if you're outside in the living room. It's really mm. out of your line of vision. Yeah. So I think I, I get a sense now of um, the different barriers that you have. So nudging is actually perfect for someone like you because intrinsically, a part of you does want to be healthier. So I'm going to take this all back. Uh, I'm going to draw up a plan um, and then we see how we can best help you. While Serene is working out a personalised plan to nudge me, I want to see if we as a community can do more to nudge ourselves collectively to better health. According to these guidelines from the Health Promotion Board, lifestyle activities such as washing the car, mopping the floor or taking the stairs can count towards the weekly goal of 150 minutes of physical activity we need to be healthy. If something as simple as taking the stairs helps, could a few nudges in our public spaces be key to our collective health? One hundred and fifty minutes of MVPA a week is the target in Singapore for an entire nation of people to reap benefits in mental and physical health. That works out to just under twenty-two minutes a day. You might think that's a tall order, especially for busy working adults. But getting there doesn't mean you absolutely have to make time to go to the park, the pool or the gym. You could choose the longer route for your coffee run rather than having it delivered. Or you can choose to take the stairs on your daily commute. Here we go. And bit by bit, get to your 150 minutes. In fact, when it comes to staircases, they have become the prime places to employ nudges around the world to get people to choose to take the stairs rather than the lift or escalator. But do they really work? I am roping in Dr. Victor Sia to give his take. He's a behavioural scientist who is very interested in nudging people in the workplace into making better choices. These rather ingenious ways okay. of getting people to go up the stairs. So I there's like this, that, right? Yeah. There's, there's multicolour stickers yes. with words on them. Yes. So I want to climb the stairs to fitness. It's great, right? 
if I would want to do fitness. So it could be yeah. that I don't want to climb the stairs to fitness. So it's <laughs> exactly. like, so why, why should I? Is Correct. That... So that message will then resonate with you. These informational nudges require us to notice and then react to them. But Victor reckons it's the choice architecture you don't notice that makes an impact. And he's keen to show me how that works using the ground floor lobby of this second floor office cafeteria we've been chatting in. Choice architecture refers to how choices are presented to you, like in this case, the lift or the stairs. Among the 500 people that visit this cafeteria, we counted that on average about 300 take the lift and 200 take the stairs. All right, Jason, so when you came in, what was the first thing that you were looking at? Automatically, I think I'm making a judgment about where do I want to go and how do I get there? Excellent. So we're making decisions as we walk in, right? So what we're looking at determines what we uh, end up choosing. If we were to get people to take the stairs more, we have to catch them at decision point. So we find more clues for why people use the lift over the stairs. So I'll explain, okay? So, you know, we're always engaging in some kind of mental accounting. So the further we walk, we're thinking, okay, now the stairs are a little closer, the leaf is sort of there, but I have to sort of awkwardly turn left. And then the further I go here, the closer I get to, you know, where the physical effort for taking the stairs is really low. It's fascinating to see choices being made here, yes. right in front of us. But how can we design a nudge that will make folks want to choose the stairs over the lift? So what we have here is a row of plants. People who took the lift, they took this diagonal path uh, to the lift. So essentially we're trying to make it harder for them to get to the lift. So why was this nudge chosen? How did you come up with this? So we don't need you to think about the message. We just need you to realise that, oh, this path is kind of difficult. I might go the other way. Right. These awkwardly placed pots of plants will be left here for one week. Hopefully, they block the lift so well that it nudges more people to take the stairs. We place sensors and cameras to count the number of people coming and going. One week later, Victor's back with the data. We have a 6% increase wow. in the number of people who've uh, taken the stairs. Okay. And I think the great thing about 6% in this context is that we are dealing with people with entrenched habits. Right. If you look at the numbers, it started out almost immediately the, on the day that we started, we, we pl placed the plan. So I, I think it's cheap, it's fast, it's convenient. I, I think it's a really nice way to get people to take the stairs. So nudges that we don't even notice are nudging us can subconsciously help us sneak in minutes of MVPA daily. But for myself, I want more certainty. I want to set up a routine where I consistently go out to cycle at least three times a week. The good news is, Serene has come back to me on nudges that are supposed to work with the specific barriers I have. Will they work? We'll see. But for myself, I want more... Oh. Here we go. Many folks may not know this. Although I am a presenter for documentaries, I'm also an executive coach. My first love is orchestral music. And I'm the principal conductor for an orchestra in Singapore. So between all my different passions, I do sometimes neglect my fitness. I've been on a quest to find out how nudges can help me achieve 150 minutes of moderate to vigorous physical activity a week. Serene, my expert nudger friend, is back and she's prepared. So what nudges have you designed for me? So if you want to change behaviour, make it easy, attractive, social and timely. Uh -huh. And right now, we're already doing something very easy, right? We're taking a walk. That's an easy way to get started. It really is. It is, right? right? And, yes. you know, um, and yeah. making it social is doing it with a person, with a friend, right? So I asked you out for a morning walk. You're doing this with me. So the other thing that I was thinking about based on you know, the chat that we had earlier at your house was how to make exercise even more attractive. So when we talk about attractive, right. we're talking about things that draw your attention, that attract your attention. But the fact that these things are hidden away from your line of sight yes. means that the prospect of exercise 
is not foremost in your mind. Because I can ignore them. Exactly. It's easy to put at the back of your mind. Okay. So one of the things, and this is a very simple thing for you to do, is to bring these things to the forefront of your home so that it becomes in the forefront of your mind. <laughs> Just have them in the middle of the living room. So for instance, right. right, your workout clothes. Okay. Could you take them out the night before and put them where your remote control is instead? Ooh. Your workout clothes are there as a reminder that you have made a commitment to yourself to exercise. Um, and this has been shown to actually work. And so the last category of nudges is timely. Timely, right, okay. Which has to do with our concept of time. So there are studies to show that how you think of your future self is almost as if you're thinking of a different person. So it feels like I'm putting all this effort in for a completely different person. Exactly, which is why it feels so hard because it doesn't feel that you're benefiting today but it's some other person who is benefiting which is why it's so challenging. When participants were showed an artificially aged picture of themselves in the future, they were more likely to set aside money for retirement. So I, I get it that it applies to retirement but, but for exercise, right? If I, if I start exercising now, I don't really feel any immediate benefit, mm -hmm. right? But if we can see a picture of your future self, future Jason, and remember that what you're doing right now is not to benefit yourself immediately today, but to benefit this future you, you may be more likely to then put in effort to exercise today. So for the coming week, based on Serene's suggestions, there would be some changes in my house. So just to recap, when I come back for the day, I go into the shower, get clean, and I can sit here on the sofa and watch TV. But to disrupt that routine, these remote controls will have to be hidden away. This is to make the temptation to get comfortable less obvious. And I have to replace it with this. And to make exercise even harder to ignore, with these changes, this is what should happen instead. Now when I come home for the day, I hate that it's hard to ignore that. And since I'm already sweaty, I might as well put these clothes on and go do some exercise. Now, getting into these exercise clothes is the first step. Can I nudge myself into exercising longer? I have an appointment with Harry from Sports Singapore. Surprisingly, we have a lot more in common despite how different our day jobs are. Hey, Harry. Hi there. Hi, hi Jason. So, I have to confess, I'm not in my favourite place in the world, the gym. Yep. But we do have something in common about music. I did my research on music and exercise and for a long time now we've known that music and performance has had a close relationship and it can be seen from the fact that actually music is banned in professional competitions, right? You're right, because when I see Tour de France or when I see people doing marathons, they're not, they haven't got headphones on, have they? Yes, yes, they kind of picked up on the fact that, you know, music can help people perform. So I'm not looking to be in the next Olympics. I kind of just want to get off the sofa, yes. do a bit more exercise. Is there anything in your research that can help me? So I've conceptualised a research study, so follow me this way okay. to the lab. Sounds yeah. good to me. Shall we? So I've changed and I'm ready for the torture that you're, you're going to give me. So what's going on here? And the good news is you'll be doing it while listening to music. Okay. Yeah. And at various points during the um, time trial, I'll be asking you to respond to some questions. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. It's kind of obvious, right? If I listen to music, I can exercise for longer. Well, it's not that straightforward. Keep watching. Three, two, one. In Harry's study, participants cycled for 10 kilometers. At various points, participants rated how they feel about the exercise. Right, can I ask you what's the thing is cool? Fine, fine. Three. And how hard they feel they've exerted. With music blasting in my ears, singing my favorite tunes in my head, I feel pretty great. Okay, and you are there. You're done. Yes. <laughs> So you'll be coming back in a few days' time to do the time trial again under slightly different circumstances. I'm back again to repeat the trial. This time, I don't have music as my crutch.
uh, how difficult or easy the activity feels now. Just as I was about to call it quits, Harry starts playing some music. I can already tell you now, it's easier with music. <laughs> Confirmed. Because the silence in the room is weird. It feels like the music's getting faster. Now you can stop. Gosh, that was a little bit of an exertion. So, <laughs> sweating, sweating. How did you feel about the experience today when the music kicked in? When the music kicked in, I definitely felt a boost in speed and energy. Well, the first five minutes were agonizing because there was, there was nothing. When the music came, it was like, oh, thank you. <laughs> <gasps> and I, I think I rode a little bit faster for a while. So this um, experience that we've just gone through is a replication of a research study that I did with 11 cyclists post-exercise, when we record yeah, feelings of pleasure-displeasure, what we found is uh, even though music all the way through had better uh, outcomes in terms of timings, the participants reported feeling more positive about the experience when they had music only for the second half as opposed to uh, music all the way through. If you're getting more positive experience out of such uh, intervention in the way that music has been presented, then I think it is good for people who are looking to continue exercising. At the end of it, if you're positive about the entire exercise, you're more likely to want to come back the next time round. Is I could put one song on and then have a break, yes. and then play the next song and have a break, yes. and it would keep me going. Yes. So far, I've learned various nudges that I'm pretty sure can help me build a habit around exercising. But I still get this sense I haven't yet nudged at the root cause of why I often slip at exercise. Maybe I am missing the final nudge that Serene, my expert nudger, told me about. She gave me a tip on how I can remind myself that I'm really doing this exercise for my future self. So, I'm going to frame this photo and hopefully that would be the final nudge I need. <laughs>